All right, now we want to welcome all our new subscribers. We're going to do it in just 10 seconds. Go. Montfest Mahathan. Daisy Carpio. KP1 Shetty. Ash Shaman. John Butler, Davis. Susan Ivan Vinal, Massage. Lib Sue Carreta. Dan Jacob Richards. Bell, Angel McCall, Emmanuel. <laughs> Turnover Diane Hodgson with LaToya Fire. Gracie Quinn. None. Nevul, Elisha, SJM. Kairos Tash Como. Dan, and Bahavra Harkajigagi. Welcome. Well, <laughs> we'll be right back. Remember when welcoming our new subscribers would have taken just one second? <laughs> I do. Like we like to look at Ted. Okay, on to the search. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. We're going to do a morning scripture. We're going to be in Isaiah chapter day. Oh, uh, we're in 59, 21, and uh, we're still talking just family. Yeah. Holidays. It's about the family, everything. You know, well, we got Comic Wednesday. Comic Wednesday. <laughs> what are some of our comments? Jacob Ingram says, I can't believe you're a camper, Scott. That's so mean. <laughs> He must be a runner. So can't, in, in the gaming world, campers are a bad thing because you hide in a house. It doesn't take as much skill, they believe, and if someone wins in, you just shoot them. Well, yeah, you hide behind things and everything else. it takes else. a lot of skill. But it, it makes more sense than running out <laughs> to where people are, sh are Listen, shooting. Listen, if they were real, you'd be a camper too. Exactly. Kathy Fan said, you were recommended on YouTube, so my first watch is now. Welcome, Kathy. Everyone That's replied. Awesome. To, when you see a new person, everyone replied like crazy. Kathy, tell us, where are you from? Uh, Pollock Carpenito, Scott, you're what I call a piece of work. I am. <laughs> I got I'm a piece of work of yes, God. He's a piece of work. I am. Thank you. Legends Brandon said, you guys are doing a great thing. I teach martial arts and I apply what you guys teach in my own class. It's a way, uh, one way of adding God to my work. Thank and you. And we're going to start adding wow. what you teach in our wake up show. <laughs> no, please. Grab my wrist. I like, my other wrist. I like when you can what snatch from? the pedible from my hand. <laughs> Nikki Bessos says, Hello, pastors. My name is Nikki. I'm semi-new. Been watching since October of this year. That also happens to be when I started going to the Awatuki Church. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we have one in Awatuki. Early August, I got very sick. Thought I had colon cancer. Was scared. I was praying. Didn't feel connection to my prayers. Almost felt like they were just words with no faith. Then one day, I woke up. Distraught, I came into work. My mind was all over the place. I found a quiet room at work. Just talked to God. I told him what I was scared. I was mad. Uh, Please bless with health. I cried. I yelled. And then I ended with a calm. Lord, if you can give me a sign that it's going to be okay. When I tell you that as soon as I left the room, signs were just appearing. The big one was to find you guys. On October 21st, wow. I went to the church in Awatuki. The best part is my fiance goes with me as well, and we love it. Our first uh, mass, pastor prayed over me. The next day, I had my colonos colonoscopy. Everything came back great. It's a really long comment, but what That's a story! A Thank comment. you, Nikki. Wow, oh my she God. got healed. I like this name alone. Cute, but psycho. Seven two. <laughs> seven two. I'm cute, cute, but she realized I understand. But I'm, I'm a little psycho. I'm a little crazy, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but it said, said this. You should see me luluing in my bathroom, getting ready for work, and I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Esther Apong, first time watching from, from New, York. New York. What's up, I Esther? I got that too. James Zebley, hey, I love you guys. I've been watching for a few weeks now. Just have to say, I watch you all every morning, and now your messages always seem like just what I need. Hey, good to have you, James. Amen. We have Chevy Chase. That's great. Th Chevy Chase says thanks, fellas. Yeah, well, we I, love what you do. Fletch is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, yeah. And Dan Aykroyd's been a, a fan for many. Oh my God, Dan. We have. Oh, he's not on today. He no. couldn't make it. Yeah, but welcome, Chevy. Chase. And uh, <laughs> Jebari Superville says he's a watcher from Trinidad, Tobago, which I think that's just a little north of Payson, right? <laughs> what is Trinidad, Tobago? It's just, no, you go to Payson and then you turn left at Albuquerque. No, where is that? I want to know. What if it's like in some cool, like, oh, far know. reaches of... It's in the Caribbean. Is it really? The Caribbean? Yeah. Oh, wow. welcome. Welcome. Good to have you. All right, we're in Isaiah today. I was trying and, to think uh, of like a Caribbean accent, but I can't think of one. Uh, no problem, Mom. Oh, okay. But I think that's Jamaican. Is that, that's Caribbean. Yes. I'd love... You were I'd there. Love that place. Talk about the happiest people in the world. No matter what happens. Because there's no problems. There's no problem, man. Yeah. Ah, no problem, man. So we're, we're, we're driving, and it's the craziest place I've ever, other than Gulu, to drive. And it's this little one road cliff over here, and you can just barely fit two cars. So the car in front of us stopped, and the car, this car, and they rolled down their windows and they talked. And when I say they talked, <laughs> the cars, they were catching up. No, no, it was for until I go. Uh, do you honk your horn? He goes, no, no, that'd be rude. There's no problem. They're talking. And cars are lining up. 
I said in America, <laughs> somebody goes to jail. In America, this would be a problem, <laughs> Mon. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, as for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants, descendants, says the Lord, from this time forevermore. So he starts off with saying, look, I've got a promise for you, right? right. It's a covenant. There's, there's all these promises in his covenant with us, right? And he's right. talking about the new covenant. He's like, from that time, I'm going to talk about, about the new covenant. I'm going to put my words in your mouth, but not, and they're not going to depart from it, but not just your mouth, but your children's mouth and your children's children's mouth. I so there's a promise it. here yeah. for us as believers that when we receive Christ, no matter what age you are, right. a promise comes into you, right? His word comes into your mouth. And then what is that promise? That your kids and your grandkids. God cares about family. He does. He loves family. He created the family. And the family, as you talked about um, yesterday, is just, it's supposed to be that place that you come and you get energized and you get built up. Yeah. Kind of like, it's a picture of church. So, you know, because the bride and the groom and the, the church is also that. You yeah. come to church on, on the weekend yeah. and you just get around family. Yeah. And you get energized and you get built up. And so then his goal then is for us to be that picture in our home. Yeah. It's not battling and it's not fighting. You know, we grew up and mom and dad, because they didn't know how to do it, they had, we, they battled. Yeah. But you know what they did is rather than just accept the battle, they found out how not to battle. Yeah. They worked really hard. How many well, marriage seminars did they go to? Well, and think about the promise is, is what did he say? He said, I'm my words on your right. mouth. So the, the, the kind of the, his strategy for invading your home is changing how we talk. Oh, that's so good, Jason. Right? We can either use our words to build each other up right. or to tear each other down. And right. in a home, often, words are used because, because the, the norm, the TV, the, the norm of how you grew up, the norm is we attack each other at home because we're trying to make each other better. And so we're not building up, we're tearing down. We're but tearing God's up. like, look, look, I'm going to give you some different words to say. And think of that. A hammer can be used to build... Or to tear. Yeah, you can demo the right? home or you can make the uh, home better. When Peyton was just a, about, a, a, he was like three years old, we were having daddy-daughter, but I was fixing the house and I was hammering little nails and he's like, daddy, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, I'm fixing I'm fixing the wall. So yeah. I was doing a little nail. And it wasn't long before I hear him go, I hear boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I'm like, Peyton, what are you doing? He goes, I'm fixing the house. Well, no, you're not. <laughs> you just made more work for me because you made a hole. And that's the same thing for the you. Wall. Your words can build people up, uh -huh. can encourage them. They can leave knowing yeah. that they can win. Or your words can tear down. So when you get together in this holiday season, you're driving. I always, you know, it's good to remind yourself, right? As you're driving to the thing, go, yeah. you put know on, what? Put on your armor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can go, you, you, you almost have to, because sometimes when people, you just show up, you're like, hey, and then, you know, Uncle Ted yes. says something and you weren't prepared for it. You feel attacked. And then you go back off, but you can go, yeah, I know Uncle Ted. That's Uncle Ted. Yeah. That's the way he is and he's hurting. And so you go into it going, it doesn't matter what Uncle Ted says or anybody says, when they say something tearing down, I'm going to build up. I'm building up. Oh, Ted, you're so funny. Yeah. Return, return evil with goodness is the way Peter said it. He said, yes. when you get evil, just return it with goodness. But, so what is he saying? He's saying evil for evil. Well, that, that's obvious. That's what everyone does. <laughs> that's easy. And, and our, do that. Just look around. It doesn't work. Yeah. Right? That's his point. Like, it doesn't work. Evil for evil never works. So he says, let's try something new. When you get evil, just return it with good. Just, you know, absorb, be the pin cushion, if you want to call it that, right? And uh, then turn around for good. Because when you turn around for good, you keep your dignity. Right. right, you keep you. You don't allow other people to decide who you are, how you act, what oh, your moral fiber is made up of. Instead, you begin to let Jesus out of you because He's got different words. So when you use your words to speak up words that build up, then you're activating that promise. You're you're so you're good. getting Jesus and His Word invading your family atmosphere. And we need to recognize that there's a promise. There might be parents out there who your kids, uh, you know, have grown up, but maybe they're not serving God. Or other parents who you're afraid that your kids one day won't serve God. They're young, maybe. And so we want to receive that promise today. Today we want to receive the promise that God's in you, Christ's word is in your mouth. You're building up right. with your words. But that your children and your children's sure, sure. children now are safe. They're going to, because of your faithfulness, because you're a remainder, because of what's on your lips, you're, there's a promise that's going to be miraculous in your life. That was...
Loved it. Let's yeah. pray over the day. Yeah. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for the promise, Lord, that you're speaking through us. Speak through us in the holiday. Speak through us to our kids, to our grandkids, to our, our parents, to our aunts and our uncles, that we are not people who tear down, but instead we build up. That we're the ones that encourage. We're the ones when people walk away, they feel better about themselves. They see something different. They know we're Christians. But now we want them to see we're Christians. Mm -hmm. We want them to experience what it means to be unconditionally loved. Because many of our family members have never felt that unconditional love. They have a, they, they, they've been put down and they've been shamed and they've been condemned their whole life. And so we're going to show them something different. Because in eternity... It's worth a moment of me being uncomfortable, as Jason said, a pincushion. Their eternity is worth me finding a way to build them up even when they're trying to tear me down. Because you have strengthened me and you put your word in me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, watch this clip. We start a brand new series today called New. Turn to your neighbor and say New. New. It's a brand new series called New. As we enter into the new year, as tomorrow is going to be a new day. What do we do to have a different year than we had this year? What do we do to have a different day maybe, or even a better day as I enter into the new? And we're going to be looking at Paul and Silas here in uh, uh, 1622. And uh, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. How many people know that just because we become Christian get saved, that it's not all butterflies, right, and pancakes all the time, and rainbows, but we're going to have storms, that it's not hidden from us, that we're going to have opposition, that we go off into the world and we're doing our purpose and we're doing our destiny and we're, we're trying to change the world, that the enemy is like a lion that's coming around and trying to have an opposition. And so it's not that we won't have opposition, but it's that Christ Jesus in us will help us overcome whatever opposition comes before us because if God is for us, who can be against us? And so it is a battle sometimes, but we have to know that we do have the victory. It's a storm sometimes, but we have to know that the rainbow is coming. And so here they are, they're in the middle of a storm, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, I don't know what flogged is, but I don't think it's good, right? They were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. And when we received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks about midnight. Say midnight. Midnight. Midnight is like that, that, that little timeline between the old day and the new day. It's the difference between yesterday and today. Or you could say, I guess, tomorrow. It's what has happened and what's going to happen. So there's a fine line as we approach midnight. As we approach the darkness, right, the midnight hour, we get to midnight and now there is a new that is coming. But what I want you to see is, is what you do in the old has a big effect on the new. What you bring from yesterday into today has an effect. And so what is Paul and Silas going to do? They traveled over 1,400 miles, over 1,400 miles to get here, to preach the Word, to do their purpose, and to do their destiny. And you see that they show up, and there's an opposition, and they're beaten, and they're flogged, and now I'm in prison, and we don't know where tomorrow is going to go, and what's going to happen, and is it disgruntled, and where is God? Why didn't God show up? Give my life to this. Travel all this way. And now, I, really, I get flogged? I got flogged today. This is what I get after all that I've done? Where is my God? Why didn't He show up? Why are we in prison? Why are these things happening? Why am I going through this in my teenagers? Why am I going through this in my relationship? Why is this happening in my finances? Why is this happening? And so oftentimes we get to midnight. But remember what I do at midnight has a big effect about what happens in my new day. So what did Paul and Silas do? It was about midnight. Throw that scripture up there for me, Betsy. About midnight, 
Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. How many people know that people around you are listening? That your kids are listening? Teenagers, maybe your parents are listening to what you're doing. Your co-workers and your friends, they're seeing. Okay, wait, they're Christian. They're going through th something and they're listening to see, is there anything different from us? And those are in the world and so they were listening to them. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's, I love the fact that it was everyone's chains. So it didn't just affect me. It wasn't just my world that was affected. Come on, somebody out there. I begin to affect my kids. I affect my coworkers. Everyone around me begins to get affected based on how I approach my new day. We're going to have midnights, just part of life. We are going to have those broken type moments. We're going to have that battle. We're going to have that opposition. But what are you, what are we as a church going to be as we're approaching midnight, as we're getting into the new? Thumbs up. Hope you liked it. Like and subscribe. And uh, candlelight service yeah. at all of our locations. Epic, amazing, Ahwatukee, Gilbert, Scottsdale, Mesa, yeah. Gulu. Yeah, and Gulu. And wherever you live, um, maybe you live, uh, people watch this all over the place. Um, you know, support your church, right. find a church, bring people to their candlelight service. In Trinidad. Yeah, in Trinidad. Blow that thing up, Arkansas. We, we send our love to you in California, <laughs> with the, the you, Philippines, Okinawa. Say, we have our Okinawa person. We do. Yeah. Uh, and did you say Trinidad is in Arkansas? No, I was just mentioning another place <laughs> called Arkansas. Oh, Ar where is that? Is that out? Uh, Arkansas that's Caribbean. is just our, our of Kansas. <laughs> I don't know what to do with you. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh.